the whole system uh, of the nervous system is, is quite complex. It's quite convoluted. There's a lot of components. Um, so these are a lot of topics uh, that you're going to delve into when you get into the physiology or biology section. So thankfully, there's some overlap here. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be the first time you're seeing this. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to walk through all the really important points that you really need to know for the MCAT. So the basic unit um, in our brains, really in our body, would be the neuron, or a, it's t the term that's used sort of analogously is, is, is a cell. So when you hear the term brain cell or neuron, they're essentially the same thing. And these brain cells or neurons in general can be specialized based on where they're located. So we said that they're, basal, they're the basic functional and structural unit of the nervous system. Each one is highly specialized to transmit and process um, information, and that's done through the process of action potentials and synaptic transmission. So action potentials are the electrochemical signals of the nervous system, and, and neurons are really neat in that they actually employ two modes of information. So they use electrical uh, through the action potential, and we'll see the movement of ions uh, is what's behind that, and then we have the chemical side, so looking at neurotransmitters. So our three basic buckets are we have an electrical signal, which is the action potential, which travels down the length of an axon. And then we're going to have a, synap a synapse between your neuron two neurons. And at that point, we initiate the chemical signal. And this is where the action potential initiates release of the neurotransmitter across the synapse. And then ultimately, that signal is converted back to electrical signal. And so the postsynaptic side continues the electrical signal via an action potential. So we should understand that we're going from electrical to chemical to electrical. And another point to remember is that at no point are any of these neurons actually in contact. So there's always a synapse between two different neurons. So you should be familiar with the structure of a neuron. So again, this is a, a pretty straightforward MCAT question that you're probably going to get. Um, it's looking at all the different components. Uh, you should be familiar with the main parts, including the soma, which is the sort of the head of the neuron. And then you'll notice inside that cell soma, you'll have the uh, cell body. And then we have an axon. An axon runs down the length of the neuron. And then it's wrapped in myelin, which is a fatty insulator. And you'll notice breaks in that myelin. So if you look down the length of the axon, you'll notice you have little breaks. Those little breaks are known as node ranviers. So again, another term you should definitely be familiar with. And at the end, you'll have your dendrites. Uh, and the dendrites are what synapse or make a um, non-contact connection with the next neuron. So these are the basic sort of structures that we need to be familiar with, especially the cell body, the soma, the axon, the dendrites, and the nodoronvier. Now, as I mentioned, you're going to have a synapse, which is a term that we use to indicate that one neuron is talking to another. Now, in this equation, we're going to have a synapse, and we're going to have everything else coming before that synapse, which would be pre synaptic or presynapse, and then we're going to have the neuron that's on the other side or the receiving end of that synapse, and that would be a postsynaptic neuron. Now, the way things work are at the end of a dendrite or a bouton, which re refers to that sort of bulbous end of the presynaptic side, you'll have vesicles or these little bubbles, and these vesicles are storage compartments that actually contain the neurotransmitter embedded in that neuron. So each neuron typically is um, associated with one neurotransmitter. So if that neurotransmitter contains, say, GABA, which is the inhibitory neurotransmitter, we would call that presynaptic neuron GABAergic, meaning that in its vesicles it contains molecules of GABA. If it contained glutamate, which is the excitatory neurotransmitter, you would have glutamatergic. Now, when the appropriate conditions are met and it's time for that um, electrical signal to be passed along through the synapse to the postsynaptic side, that's done through release of this neurotransmitter that is stored in the vesicles. And the vesicles fuse to the presynaptic side through a process that we called exocytosis. Exocytosis. And that refers to these vesicles traveling down to the base of the presynaptic side, fusing with the membrane and dumping their contents. So that process is called exocytosis. And that's how it releases its neurotransmitter into the synapse. It floats around in the synapse, and then it binds to a little receptor on the postsynaptic side. 
and these are collectively known as postsynaptic receptors. So I think you're, you're, getting, you're catching the drift here of pre versus post in a synapse, and everything is therefore labeled accordingly, presynaptic neuron, postsynaptic neuron, postsynaptic receptor. Uh, and, and this is the process of how we go from electrical to chemical, and once we get to the other side in terms of activating a postsynaptic receptor, that opens ion channels and reconverts the signal back to an electrical signal that travels down the length of the receiving postsynaptic neuron. So that was a lot I kind of just threw at you there. So you, you might want to rewind this and watch it a few times. And, and we're going to take a look at this image. And then on the next slide, we'll get into some sort of different processes as well. So this will come up again. I'm going to walk you through that process a few times. <music>